So, is there now a hotline that you can call and tattle on people that are not wearing masks? I believe. Do you believe it, Bay, right? <laughs> well, the answer is no. No, it's not. Fake story. No, there it is. No. Yeah, there well. it is. <laughs> I believe it. So, there's an Ohio County. <laughs> that implements a hotline to report people not wearing masks. This is in Cuyahoga County. Major city in Cuyahoga, Cleveland. I got that Cuyahoga River. Burn on. That that river literally burned in the 80s due to pollution. Yo. Right. <laughs> Randy Newman wrote a song about it called Burn On. Yo. And it was used in the beginning of the movie Major League. <laughs> right. Love that movie. Yeah, great movie. Uh, <laughs> that's what Charlie Sheen. Mm -hmm. And you know why I know that crap? Trivia. Tuesday. <laughs> Tennessee Valley Burnwing Company. I, I was asking. That was a segue right there. <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, so they created this hotline so that people can tattle on their neighbors for not wearing masks. <laughs> Ironically, though, the county executive claims that they want people to wear masks voluntarily. <laughs> Mixed signals. <laughs> Leadership is so important in this time. <laughs> Good luck on that one. So Cuyahoga County, okay? Uh, Cuyahoga. <laughs> they, uh, yeah, they've uh, uh, taken to uh, Ohio Governor uh, uh, Mike DeWine's uh, mask order to uh, to the next level by establishing a hotline that allows people to report others for not wearing what is now uh, considered a, a proper attire in the new era of the uh, coronavirus. Oh, also, like indecent exposure. Yeah. Oh. Oh. <sighs> oh, do they get put on the uh, do they get put on the list too? Oh no. Right? <laughs> do they have a mask? Yeah. <laughs> Were they by a school zone? D Were they in a school zone? Oh no. <laughs> is it 1-800 call Karen? <laughs> Where are they putting the mask? Karen is a saint. I saw this one video. I wish I had it, but I'm, I'm glad I don't. But uh, this guy and girl, they're going into a restaurant and so the girl's wearing a mask and they let her in. The guy's like right behind her, and they stop him. And they go, well, you have to wear a mask. And she goes, I don't have a mask. And do you have one? And they go, we don't give out masks here at this restaurant. Right. Oh. We, don't, we don't give masks here. Do you know what he did? Hey, Ani. <laughs> hey, Ani, come here. Guy walked in with his underwear on his face. And they let him in. It's crazy. True story. It's cr true story. That's a good one. True story. <laughs> I, I got the video. I, got, I won't play it for. I'll play it later. No, that's a good one. Right. I, love that. I like that. One. There is positive news out there. There <laughs> is. Like the guy. Are we calling that positive news? <laughs> Absolutely. The mask that guard. That's definitely a win in a time like this. I'll take that as a win. That's okay. a good one. Yo, baby. <laughs> Come here, my friend. So the guy, the gu the face mask guard or whatever you want to call him, was just like. <laughs> Didn't know what to do. How about the clap? I mean, I've seen the couple. I would have bought him like two drinks. I've seen the couple <laughs> standing side by side where they have a oh, bra. Oh, a bra. Yeah. Mm. Uh, now that's mm. a thinker. That's right. <laughs> uh, mm. No comment. No comment. Well, they walked into a restaurant, right? Is that we, what they were doing? Yeah, yeah. So, dumb question. Yeah, what's up, man? So every time they eat, they pull down their mask and. Uh huh. Yeah, that, you that's the policy. Out your that's, right. That's the, yeah. Well, yeah. that's why I'm going to make my millions when I make the uh, <laughs> the Velcro mask. <laughs> right. <laughs> the flap. <laughs> right. I thought oh. you were going to ask, how did he get that on his Oh, head? yeah. <laughs> oh, she was wearing a dress. She was wearing a dress. <laughs> There's masks out there. They have uh, the clear front now. Do they? So you can see your lips. So you can see you're talking now. People are complaining that what if it totally you don't get the thinking? facial expression. I love that idea, actually. Because um, I, I I watch people's eyes now more, which is great because I, I get to see people with better <laughs> eyes. But if they have ugly eyes, I notice they have ugly eyes now, too. Oh, no. Right. <laughs> so I don't look at them when I talk to them. I'm just like, hey, how's it going? How you been? <laughs> yeah. No, that was a great date the other night. Yeah. <laughs> But, but you don't see smiles out there. No. That's what I've noticed. You don't see people smiling. No. They may be. And that's got to be tough for the service Good. industry, the waitresses and waiters. Because, you know, you service got, with a smile, it helps with the tips. You got to learn to smile with your eyes. <laughs> we need a lot more smiling. Like, oh, 
Oh, that, that waitress is very happy. Or on cocaine. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Smile with the eyes. <laughs> All right, so th- this uh, this hotline for the mask... Uh, it, it, so the, uh, the governor's mask order will largely rely upon complaints filed by the public rather than protective policing. Quote, check this out. This is coming from the uh, the Cuyahoga, uh, Cuyahoga, Cuyahoga <laughs> County Executive uh, Ar- uh, Armand uh, Budish is the guy's name. So he said this, quote, This is not intended to be going out and finding people not wearing masks. We want people to wear their mask. We want people to do it voluntarily. Then why have a hotline? So they can uh, send the bill in the mail to you. Yeah, but, but you think it's all about <laughs> revenue? Yep. <laughs> You've been reported. Why not to say there's not enough uh, people in law enforcement to uh, throughout the county to track down people, chase them around, and figure out who can go, who we can go after, and not wear a mask. So after a complaint's filed, though, okay, county workers will then contact the person or business <laughs> to inform them that they have been reported. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something. That's not fair. They should always provide who reported you. You got to wait till after, you know, the report come out to find that out. Complaints will also be forwarded <laughs> to the Board of Health. So now you're on record. As well as the, uh, as well as the, uh, the relevant uh, city or village within Cuyahoga. <laughs> so the big question is, so what? I know. What's the so what? What is the so what on this? <laughs> that was going to be my questions to you guys. Well, to me, it sounds like a law. Uh-huh. If a law is codified and it went through the process. Right, right, right. Here in Tennessee. Absolutely. If it's a law, it's been deemed constitutional. Uh-huh. It's been through our bicameral system. That's right. It's a law. It's a law. But an executive order from a governor is not a law. Ooh. In times of crisis, to protect the people uh-huh. can be interpreted in so many ways. Okay. So we're talking livelihood now. And we're talking things that now impose a fine or punitive action. All those need to be codified in structure of a law. Tennessee Code, something that's gone through. That is the biggest issue we have right now in Tennessee. The House of Representatives really started to get after that to give more structure for the governor in case of a pandemic or another crisis, tornadoes, right, right, right. come about to give him or her the latitude to make prescribed laws that are already allowed by legislators. Now we're starting to venture into outside of that realm. Interesting. So <laughs> the, uh, the Senate dismissed early, so we couldn't get after these. So the governor is playing with scissors and at no fault to him, you don't know which governor you vote for is going to be able to handle a crisis like this. They, uh, I know how I would act, and it would be a little bit different. It would be to the point where government isn't there to tell you what to do, especially if you're abiding by the law. There, 99% of us are following the law. First hotbed question. If ever elected governor of Tennessee, would you put in a hotline where people could call to report non-face mask wearers? No. No. All right. <laughs> you know, uh, violating this uh, this uh, the Ohio governor's order, there is a second degree misdemeanor, punishable up to 90 days in jail and a $750 fine. <laughs> Don't forget about the court wow. costs. Oh, of course, of course. Don't so, about that. So it's interpreted. So it probably didn't go through. Mm-hmm. Would have, I'd have to follow. I don't know the exact trail of that, but more than likely, yeah. most uh, legislators in the states are part-time. So you have to wait till the session opens up uh-huh. and then go through the process. Wow. Hmm. So it, it, we're, we are fine, if not crossing the line, unconstitutional executive orders. That's why you've seen things have changed here in Tennessee where mm-hmm. they're not as directive. They're more suggestive now. Right, right. Hmm. Suggestive so it doesn't violate the executive order. Right. And then a lawsuit comes out and challenges it and says that was unconstitutional. But we have to live in that space until that's been judged. I didn't even think about that. The state senate's being, uh, you know, uh, not in session. Yeah. Interesting. 
So that was that was my biggest uh, complaint. Uh, if I was a legislator, if I was a senator at this time happened, I would probably would have refused to recess. Right. My job is to continue to legislate in times of crisis. Any uh, any way uh, there could be a uh, emergency recall or uh, there always is. Yeah. There's always time to legislate, or you could even legislate. Don't we have we have ways to communicate now without being in person? Correct. What you know? Yeah. I, mm-hmm. I wish I bought that Zoom stock when yeah. I was told four years ago. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> you should have did it. Ah, uh, stupid man. Smack yourself. <laughs> silly, silly <laughs> Jersey boy. <laughs> uh, Cynthia, are you calling anyone? Do what? You you gonna call anyone? Oh, you're no. in Ohio. You're snitches. in Cuyahoga. Yeah. Snitches get stitches. No sir. <laughs> well. <laughs> See, I would if snitches got riches, okay? <laughs> if, if I get half the, uh, half the, the fee, okay? I'm, oh, I'm calling. <laughs> I got to pay this thing called sewage fee now, okay? What the <laughs> hell is going on with that? That's a whole lot of crap. Oh, my God. I'm a new homeowner. I don't, I, oh. It is crap. <laughs> Literally. How can they do that much money for sewage fee? How much are they charging you? For, Okay, like nine dollars was like the water bill. I'm like, mm-hmm. all right. And then I scroll down. I go, sewage fee, <laughs> thirty bucks. Ooh, good lord. What the? <laughs> what the clerk? What? 